Yo, what's up? It's Patrick from Guy the Cube. And you ever want to move data from an operational source or even a data warehouse to a different location so you can query it with a completely different source? Or you just need to move some data in near real time with very little ETL. Well, in Fabric, there's a capability called database mirroring that allows you to do exactly that. You can move data from one location into Fabric, into the one lake, and that's using database mirroring. And a lot of times people confuse database mirroring with shortcuts. There's a clear distinction between the two. Shortcuts points to storage, like images, files, parquet files. And if the parquet files are in Delta format, they just happen to show up as tables and people confuse it with database mirroring, but it's still pointing to storage where database mirroring is typically pointing to a relational source that has some type of logging transaction capability. So we can automatically and seamlessly move that data in real time. Well, in this video, I'm going to talk about database mirroring and show you how to set it up and then show you how you can query those two disparate data sources. All right. So enough of all this talking, you know what we like to do? Let's do what? Let's head over to my laptop. So I'm in a workspace in Fabric that's backed by a premium capacity. It could be a Fabric capacity also. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up mirroring in two places. So I'm going to choose new, more options. I'm going to scroll down to my data warehouse section and you're going to see I have Azure SQL, Snowflake, and Cosmos. So I'm going to mirror data from Cosmos and I'm going to mirror data from an Azure SQL database. Then I'm going to query across Cosmos and Azure SQL. So you go to your Azure Cosmos and what you want to do is in Cosmos, you want to grab this URI right here. So I'm going to copy that on my clipboard and then I'm going to choose Azure Cosmos. Now, if you've already created a connection, that connection will show in that bottom part of the screen. I'm going to create a new connection just so I can show you all the steps. So you paste that URI into the endpoint and then I'm going to choose a new connection because I want to create a new one. We'll give it a name, my mirror Cosmos DB. And then you need the account key. If you go over to your Azure portal into Cosmos and then expand settings, you'll see the key and then you can unhide it and copy it. Let me do that. I'm going to paste it in. And once I paste it in, I click connect. It takes a few seconds for your database to load up. If you know the name, you can type it in. I'm going to wait for it to load up. Choose the name of my database, click connect. And then because I only have one table, some of the options will not be available, but I'll show you more of these options when I'm in the Azure SQL database. So then I'm going to choose connect, give it a name. Let's change this Y to IE because I spelled slushy wrong and choose create mirror database. Once all the provisioning and configuration happens behind the scenes, you'll land here and it's saying, hey, I'm getting started. You can even open up the monitor replication pane. And so you can see it could take a little bit to get this going. You just need the URI and a key for Cosmos. But while that's going, I want to show you how to set it up for my Azure SQL. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over back to mirror databases, that workspace. I'm going to choose more options again, scroll down the warehouse and you can see my Azure SQL. I'm going to go ahead and click it there. And this is the window I was talking about. If you've already created connections out to SQL. You can see in there, but I'm going to create a new connection just because I want to show you the steps. So you put in the server name and then you put in the database name. It recognizes it. I'm going to go ahead and say new connection and I'm going to call this connection uh, my mirror for Northwinds. Change my authentication to organizational account. Get signed in. There we go. Click connect. And now on this screen, I have options. So I could choose multiple tables. I can choose a single table. And I can also check this box to say automatically mirror any future table. So any new tables added or created in the source will automatically be replicated over. This is pretty interesting because if you think about how you would have to do this, if you wanted to get the data over to Fabric, you would need to use a pipeline. You have to configure some way to do incremental loading and all this. It just works. It just happens with mirroring. So the first thing that I notice here is that the little warning signs that it gives you and it says, hey, there's some unsupported columns and they will not be replicated. Well, I don't want to replicate everything. So I'm going to uncheck this. Notice how that checkbox went away at the bottom. If I choose all, then I can automatically mirror future tables. I'm not, I don't want to do that right now. I only want to mirror an individual table called orders. And I'm going to click connect and I'm going to connect to the mirror database. So it's going to start the configuration and provision in behind the scenes and get everything moved over. Okay. Well, that's happening. What I'm going to do is I'm going to head over to my workspace to show you the types of artifacts that's created. While this is happening, I'm going to click my mirror database. You can see that I have one for Cosmos. This is my Cosmos one that I'm here in the stores. And this is one for Northwind. So let's go into the Cosmos one and I'm going to monitor my replication and we'll see that 14 rows have been moved over. And so let's go over to the SQL endpoint 
And let's go ahead and just say select top 1000 and run that query. So it's running that query for me. And then you can see all those rows are replicated over. Let's go check on our Azure SQL database. So I'm gonna go back to my workspace and then we'll go over to Northwinds and then we'll say, hey, let's see what's going on with monitor replication. Great way for me to see if the data is replicated or not. This is the number of rows replicated. If I wanted to stop replication and I want to do some type of configuration, I could click here. If I want to choose more tables, I can absolutely do that. If I wanted to stop, you can do that right here. Now, the great thing though is if I go into this particular one, I'm gonna copy this just cause I'm efficient. And then I'm gonna go over to the endpoint for my Northwinds copy. And what I'm gonna do is say, give me a new query that's selecting the top 1000. And so I can see all the rows are being replicated and then I can enter join on that one, I just thought of something. I don't have the stores table in my orders database. And so I need to modify that to add that column and then update it and get it over in my mirror copy. If you're using Synapse link, this didn't work before. Schema changes didn't get replicated, but in Fabric with a mirror database, it does. Let me show you. So I'm gonna switch over to Management Studio. I'm gonna make a quick alter. I'm gonna alter the database and add this column. I'm gonna add store ID. And then what I'm gonna do is run an update statement to update all the rows. So they'll have the proper store ID on it. So once we make the change, let's head back to our workspace and look at the monitor monitor replication. Looks like everything is up to date. We can click refresh. In subsequent videos, I'll show you how to check these things. But right now, we're just gonna use the graphical user interface. And so now let me go back over to the endpoint for Northwinds and let's do expand the schema, DBO. Let's go to my tables, orders. And now you can see there's my store ID. If you don't see it, you can just go to the tables folder and click the ellipsis, click refresh, and then that new item should show up. And so if I go over to my query, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change this to star, and now I'm gonna go over to my query and join from this table. So let's do a little alias, boop. And then we're gonna say, on o.storeid equals s.storeid. Now remember, these are coming from two different sources. One's coming from Cosmos, which is a NoSQL type of solution. And then the other one's a relational database. So I'm pulling data from those two sources and I'm about to write a query to query both of them. So we'll run this query and boom, there we go, all right? So we have our data from SQL and then we have all of our information from Cosmos in a single query in Fabric. So what I've done is I've set up mirroring between Azure SQL and Cosmos that data is mirroring in near real time. I didn't do any ETL, zero ETL. And now I'm able to write a T-SQL query across both of those sources. What? Is this not amazing? What do you think? You have any questions, comments? You know what to do. Post it in the comments below. And as always, from Adam and myself, thanks for watching. See you in the next video.